Well, actually, I ran last time, so this is my second shot. I came second last time. Um, hope I don't come second again this time, to be honest. Um, look, I'd, I'd love the opportunity to lead the city. I, I know where it needs to go. I've got eight years of experience up my sleeve now, which really accounts for something. I know where we need to change. And I get on well with most of the people in the team, or what is Newcastle Council. Um, and I think that'll be my strengths, or one of my strengths as a, as a Lord Mayor. Look, the first thing we have to do, which bores people, but we are in a very financially difficult situation. Now, this year where the budget's running at an $8.5 million deficit, the next one is projected at $12 million deficit. Now, we can't keep going at that rate. Now, to get on top of that, the first thing we have to do is make some hard decisions. And that's about the services we provide, the way we do our business, you know, from our procurement to our tendering process. We've got to streamline the services that we do do. That's the number one goal for me within the first 12 months is get the books as close to balanced as we possibly can. And I think once we do that, then that frees up money to be able to, to go out and renew our shopping centres. Like the, our main shopping strips of all the suburbs are tired and run down. You know, people want their roads fixed, the footpaths replaced. We don't have money to do that at the moment. So until the books are balanced and we're back cashed up, then we can start to do some really good things. Yeah, look, um, just, just to give you an example, like, and it's, look, it's controversial and people don't like to hear it, but I've got to say it. You know, we've got nine libraries within the city, you know. Um, the Sunshine Coast is four times the size of Newcastle and has nine libraries, right? So we've got an oversupply of libraries. Now, with social media, um, uh, iPads, technology is changing. So just to give you an extreme point of view, we pay $8 million a year, we spend, sorry, $8 million a year to operate nine libraries, which is an incredible chunk out of our budget. It would be easier if we went to the three smaller libraries, went to the people who use it regularly and say, you know what, we're going to give you an iPad with e-books, anything attached, we're going to give you lessons we're going to take you down to the local community hall. We're going to build a good community from that. We're going to teach you how to use an iPad so you can feel confident in it. And unfortunately, with time, we'd have to look at closing that library. But we're supplying them with the iPad and we can build that community um, by keeping them together in a group. And that might be building them in with another organisation. So that community spirit's still there. But we have to look at those things because social media is controlling um, our lives. And... Um, we have to reduce the cost of the $8 million of the libraries. That's the reality of it. It's not sustainable. So if we could reduce that budget even by $3 million, $3 million I've got up my sleeve to go and spend it on infrastructure or, or, or something, something else. A couple of things with Hunter Street. I mean, you've still got the elephant in the room, which is the railway line. Um, and I just wish they'd hurry up and make the call on that. But in addition to that, <sighs> council can really put some good good systems in place to encourage development, that we don't do. We are so rigid and regimented in the way we approach things. That needs to be changed. Um, this council did the Hunter Street Revitalisation Master Plan and we funded that to $3 million. Unfortunately, what happened was we let the wrong staff get hold of that document. It went up into the never never and now they want to look at develop another plan for the colour of the footpaths and the shape of the, the, the seats and what the signage should be what, like. Instead of just saying, you know what, we need to do this, let's just start block by block and re start revitalising the public domain of Hunter Street. It's not that hard. I actually think any of the mayoral candidates can achieve that if they're, they're up to the task. And I do believe we'll all achieve that. I think whoever gets the Lord Mayor, we acknowledge that it has to be done and it can be done. It's really not that hard. Um, look, any state government funding is well and truly welcome, considering the financial pressure that we're under. Um, but I, you can't kid yourself to, to believe that that's going to come. I think, you know, there's pieces of infrastructure around just Newcastle, the Tool Street Bridge, the inner city bypass behind the John Hunter. I think they're two crucial bits of in infrastructure that need to be done. Council can manage Hunter Street on its own. Even with the removal of the railway line, I've seen designs where you could close it uh, and build a, a small interchange for about $10 million. You know, there's a whole lot of modelling out there. Council could do that, realistically, if the state didn't have the money and we can just remove the line and, and work around it and just chip away a little bit like 
by a little bit. Look, um, the problem with the last council, the Lord Mayor, John wasn't a team player. He, he, he never really spoke to anybody. He never really engaged as, as a group. We do the job part time, you know, so there's not a lot of time to sit down and have team building sessions. We're thrown into a room and we're suddenly, you know, sitting around a table and trying to make decisions and you've got people making political decisions and you've got people making community decisions. As a Lord Mayor, you'd ha you have to engage everybody and you have to get everyone, or as many as you can, because you won't ever get everyone, on board to say, here's all the information. This is why we're making this decision. This one might be really hard, team, but we need to stand solid. Don't get out there and run off to MBN and, and divide the issue because the community lose out in the end and we do as an organisation because they go, oh, here's council, they can't make a decision, they're arguing over it again. You can't win every fight and I'd really encourage those councillors that lose a fight, cop it on the chin and get on and we'll try and we work towards the next one because you can't keep everyone happy. That's the reality of life. You've just got to try to keep the majority of people and make your decisions um, the best decisions. Um, yeah, well, I like to think I'm a real person and I was never really cut out to be a politician. I, 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 I speak plainly. Um, I, I'm, I'm not an eloquent sort of person. Um, but I'm a hard-working person. I've been a very successful businessman. I'm a very comfortable business, businessman. Um, and I, I know that in the right environment with, and I can work with the right people. Um, and I've done that on this council. I would get on with 10 of the, the 13 councillors. Um, so I'm very confident that I can, I'll be able to deliver. Um, yes, I will upset people. I have no doubt about that. But you've got to learn to say no. It's how you say it. And sometimes when you're saying no to somebody, it doesn't matter how you say it. Oh, he's rude. Oh, you can't believe he said no or he just said no. And it's like, well, you know, you can... And I do just say no. I probably am a little bit blunt, perhaps. Um, but I've learned since I've been on council that some people don't want to hear no, you know, and there can be 20 ways to say it, but they're still not going to like you for saying it. It can be very... You've got to be bulletproof, and I am, because some of the things people say to me is just gobsmacking, and that, that's what's tipped me over the edge sometimes, like... You, you know, you get to the point and I think, I'm in this to try and make Newcastle better. You don't like me, you don't like my decision, that's fine. Don't vote for me, I can accept that, but don't be rude to me. Um, yes, I've had brain explosions because sometimes you just sit back and you go, wow, I really didn't deserve that, so I'm going to give it back to you um, and I'm worse <laughs> for that. And that's a fair call. Um, but you learn by any experience like that and um, you just... Be more tactful um, in the way you approach approach things. But I would also like to say too that this new council under my leadership, it would be such a great working environment for us all that it would be more, and that's the way I operate, yeah, that wasn't a good night. We've had a bit of argy-bargy. Come on, we'll go out the back and we'll, we'll have a glass of wine or a beer and we'll talk about it, build the bridge, and then there's no animosity then. The biggest challenge for me to get elected, if I looked at the way I've polled previously, um, there's an element of voters on the um, one side of the city that believe I'm not capable of being the Lord Mayor. I, I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm, I am rough. I'm, I'm gruff. Um, I don't look good in a suit. Um, you know, I mean, I'm a plumber by trade at the end of the day and I've worked in hospitality, so I am a pretty casual sort of person. And, and I'm not highly educated and that doesn't mean I can't do the job. I've done my apprenticeship and let me tell you, that was one hell of a, a learning curve these past eight years. Um, I need to convince those people that I'm, I won't let them down. Um, I'm, I'm a great team player, very decisive decision maker um, and you're probably not going to like that. But I'll tell you what, I'll make the decisions and I'll move the city forward. I'm going to save the money that we, cop, we stop wasting. I'm going to try and reduce the staff uh, internally, um, which I might add will be done through natural attrition because we have an exceptionally ageing workforce over the next three years. So it's the golden opportunity to, to, to look at that. Um, so, yeah, look, it's a matter of convincing the people on that side of the city that 
I mightn't look good in the mayoral robes, but I won't let them down and I will do a really good job. And look, diplom diplomatic and, you know, diplomacy and tact has got this city nowhere as far as I'm concerned over the last 10 years and that's all the politicians have offered up. I'm hoping that my blunt style and uh, might actually get us, get us some results. Because I, 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 one of the things I would say is that any state or federal member or any local mayor, I'll be holding, I'm like a dog with a bone, you know, it'll be like, uh, you know, um, shared services. Just a boy for one last sec. Um, shared services about council sharing equipment together and sharing libraries together to save ourselves money. We've talked about it for eight years and nothing's happened because Lake Macquarie Council might sit down there and go, oh, I don't, don't like those councils up there, they're idiots. But it's a matter of like saying, no, we've got to work together. You know, tell me why. Tell me publicly why you don't want to work with Newcastle Council. So I'll be trying to make everyone accountable, as well as myself, to work together, to actually get something done instead of all working in individual la-la land.